when the federal government, Canada's largest employer by far, suppresses wages for its workers, what they're really doing is pushing down wages for all workers across all sectors. Employment insurance, immigration applications, passport applications, border crossing, all of these government services could face major disruptions after public servants voted to give, give their union a strike mandate. The Public Service Alliance of Canada is in a strike position as it pushes for major pay bump coming up just days after revenue, the Canada Revenue Agency workers voted in favour of striking as well, leaving the government to negotiate or risk major service disruption. So let's bring in the front bench panel to dig in to the political stakes. Joining me now are former Nova Scotia Premier Stephen McNeil. He's now a strategic business advisor for the law firm Cox and Palmer in Halifax. Former Alberta MLA and Cabinet Minister Gary Marr. He's the president and CEO of the Canada West Foundation. And former communications director to Jagmeet Singh, Melanie Richet. She now works at Ernst Cliff Strategies and CTV News senior political correspondent Glenn McGregor is back with us as well. Hello everybody. Spring is in Ottawa, almost. almost. I hope <laughs> it's the same in your cities. Um, I'm going to start with you, uh, Steve McNeil, because you ran a province. Um, you probably understand better than most what the government has to do. Uh, how do you see this playing out with the civil servants? Well, I think I, let's put it in the context that so we're coming off of COVID where many Canadians uh, were fearful of the fact whether they were going to have a job, whether or not they could uh, uh, pay their own mortgage, support their families, uh, feed them. Uh, looking at public servants today who are looking for a roughly a 14% pay raise over three years uh, and shredding and putting in that the right to work from home, I think they better be very careful. Uh, many Canadians uh, have a very different lifestyle than what they have. I'm not suggesting for one minute that they don't deserve what they're earning, uh, but the reality of it is uh, many Canadians are having a very different lifestyle today because of COVID, the transition was happened, inflation, uh, and are very frustrated, quite frankly, by some of the services that you've described. I don't think anyone was just passport operation has been working well uh, prior to the last few months. You look at immigration. So I would be very careful if I was uh, public sector workers in this country now looking for uh, that kind of a raise in this kind of a climate. Ah, so, so Gary Marr, that the, the optics, and, uh, as Steve McNeil is saying, are important here in a negotiation like this one. We here are in a city of many public servants, but how is this playing out, or how would it play out out west? Well, let me make this first observation. If you're owed a tax refund by the Canada Revenue Agency, you're going to hope that they don't go on strike. But, you know, if, uh, if you owe taxes, maybe you're okay with that. So in all circumstances, it will depend upon, you know, sort of what the public's going to react to this. And, and I, I can remember sort of three national uh, Canada-wide strikes in my lifetime, 1980, 1991, and 2004. And maybe the closest comparator is 1991 when the Moroni government faced this. Um, it, one of the challenges at that time uh, for the union from their perspective is that they didn't have a very particularly big war chest to be able to fund uh, a long-term strike. Secondly, unemployment was very high. Um, and, and so those two things really put um, Prime Minister Mulroney uh, sort of with an upper hand in sort of dealing with, uh, with the unions. In this circumstance, I agree with Stephen that in part it will, it will depend on whether the Canadian public supports a strike given the circumstances that people who are not civil servants have found themselves in. Interestingly, uh, you know, earlier in the show, um, Tiff Macklin was talking about um, inflation rates perhaps by 2024 going back to 2%, back to their target, and, and might even be sort of in the 3% range later this year. Uh, I think that that is going to have it um, make it more difficult for the union to be calling for the kind of demands on uh, what they're looking for, something more, uh, you know, in, in a 2 to 3%. Um, you know, might be something that would be more palatable to a government. But the risk for government is that uh, this, if they don't settle this, this could be a serious 
serious problem for the federal government. They'll want to settle this, and I would think that the union yeah. probably wants to settle this with the current government rather than uh, perhaps a future government. Oh, so Melanie Paradis, I, I'm, 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 it's interesting what they both say. The, you know, public sympathy may not, you know, be with with these uh, with these civil servants. Are there? demands unrealistic in this context. So, so I think it's important to, to set the stage. These are folks who are making, for the most part, between forty and $65,000. Yeah. They're good salaries, but not salaries that can withstand the rise of inflation and the rise of cost of living. And basically what they're, what they're asking is, for the most part, it's, it's about a dollar and forty cents an hour raise. That is reasonable to a lot of folks. Um, so, so I think it'll be important um, for the union to really push that message out. We heard the president earlier say, this isn't just uh, public service workers, this is workers, right? The fight for better wages is not just a, a fight for these workers, it's a fight for all of these workers. So the more that they can push that message and the more that that um, goes out there, I think the better it will be for, for, for them to get their point across. And, and this isn't something that the government wants to, wants to have to deal with if they do go on strike. Now, now I do know that while the, the mandate to strike has been announced, they're still at the table. Yes. They're still hoping yeah. that they get a deal. So hopefully for, for everybody involved, that's, that's what happens in the next few days. So I want to ask you about optics here because that's really important. And as uh, the union president told me, uh, the public is not negotiating. We are. Right. But it, 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 the unions are negotiating with the government. They're not negotiating with the public. Yeah. Uh, Labor action is never popular with the public, especially when it interferes with services like going to get your passport or getting your EI check. Uh, that really annoys people. The longer they go on, though, the, the, the more the damage accrues to the other side, to the government. I don't think they're going to get to that, this point in this thing. I, I don't think there is going to be a strike. I think they aren't that far apart. I mean, they're going to negotiate a number, and then there's some uh, issues about the work from home uh, rules. They aren't insurmountable issues. This government doesn't want to go into a strike. Uh, neither does the union at this point. But the, you look at the labor market right now. It's a very tight labor yeah. market. So this is a good time. Organized labor in this country has been on its heels for decades now. The one place where they have some strength is in the public sector unions. So they are going to use that strength. Uh, and I think they're going to they're going to they're going to come to a number uh, before there's any uh, action. I, I, I would I would bet very strongly against uh, any kind of, of walkout. If there are going to be strikes, they'll be small, rotating. I think initially. Okay but there will be some service disruptions, but we'll see anyway. I gotta leave it uh, there, Scott, Gary, Melanie, and Glenn. You'll be sticking around. Coming up, addressing affordability. The Bank of Canada continues its pause on interest rate hikes. What does it mean for the government? Our front bench will return to weigh in next. Stay with PowerPlay.